It's such an honor and pleasure to welcome to Living History Seema Satyeshkar, uh, whom I ran into in the first Boulder Summer School I went to as a grad student. And I'm delighted to hear your full Living Histories. Uh, thank you, Shri, um, Charlie, and the other organizers and speakers. It's um, really a wonderful opportunity to be here. Um, I'm Seema Sedayeshkar. I'm um, in the physics department at Indiana University. Um, some vital statistics on me. I was born in pre-revolutionary Iran. I attended an international elementary school there. After the revolution in 1979, I um, attended uh, a public secondary school. I moved to the United States, um, to the Philadelphia area actually, uh, before the junior year of high school. And I went to a high school across the street from Bryn Mawr College. And I had the good fortune of being able to take some wonderful classes at Bryn Mawr while I was in high school, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, and, I, and I lived at the time with, with my aunt and uncle. Um, I'm married now with two kids who are um, in high school. My mother still lives in Iran. My father passed away in 2015. I have other family, including a sister who um, lives in the US and other family in Europe and Canada, but also many still in Iran, in Tehran and Shiraz. And by the way, today is the start of the Persian New Year. Um, so happy, um, happy uh, uh, Persian New Year. Uh, uh, First day of spring is 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 usually when the new year um, starts, and um, and so happy spring and happy Noru's everyone. Um, I um, went from high school to um, MIT where I was an undergraduate, and uh, although I had intended to major in chemistry, um, following some. Uh, um, uh, uh, nice uh, chemistry classes that I had taken at Bryn Mawr while I was in high school. Um, I uh, somehow transitioned into physics. Um, I had a um, really great uh, introductory physics teacher, Lee Grodzins at MIT, who uh, convinced me to major in physics instead. And uh, I ended up working uh, uh, in, in doing research with um, um, a wonderful theoretical astrophysicist, Ed Birchinger, and I completed a senior thesis with him working on large scale structure formation in cold um, dark matter models. Along the way, I also minored in Russian literature and translation, um, which is um, a little um, fun fact. Um, I moved on from uh, MIT to graduate school at Caltech, uh, intending to continue in astrophysics, but uh, I somehow got interested in structure formation on a, on a smaller scale, uh, namely non-equilibrium pattern formation in, in tabletop experiments after taking a class with um, um, Mike Cross, who ended up being my thesis advisor on chaos and nonlinear dynamics. And um, I ended up working on, um, on, on uh, a, a problem that was motivated by um, the uh, first experimental discovery of, of Turing pattern formation um, in, um, in, in, a, in a system that ironically has the acronym CIMA, not S-I-M-A, but C-I-M-A, the chlorine dioxide um, iodide muonic acid reaction diffusion system. So this was a reaction diffusion system um, in which the uh, mechanism predict the symmetry breaking um, uh, mechanism predicted by Alan Turing, um, mediated by uh, diffusion in 1952 in his seminal paper was uh, was was first experimentally um, discovered and and demonstrated in 
And so that, um, that work, um, that those series of experiments that, that came out just around the time I, I was starting um, uh, graduate school motivated what became my um, uh, PhD thesis where um, uh, I worked on, um, um, on um, uh, theoretical and numerical aspects of, of Turing pattern uh, formation um, with, uh, with my thesis advisor. While at uh, Caltech, I attended a summer school, and I think this was circa 1995, um, that, uh, uh, that was um, held at, at Princeton, but um, um, organized um, uh, jointly by Princeton and NEC, known as the Princeton NEC Biophysics Summer School. And um, and it was um, at at that point that I I I got really interested in um, in uh, uh, biophysics. I, I I learned a lot. Um, it was a very um, stimulating, exhilarating um, uh, experience. Um, probably uh, the the highlight of of um, of. Uh, of, uh, of graduate school at that point. Um, I learned about knot theory and DNA, information transmission and spiking neurons. I met many interesting people, including um, Bill Bialik, who was the um, organizer of the summer school. And from that point onward, I moved adiabatically into biophysics um, with postdoc positions, working on nonlinear wave propagation in excitable system systems and computational and applied mathematics with applications to uh, biology. And I really ended up getting um, my, my full introduction to, to biophysics when I became a, a Princeton Science and Technology postdoctoral fellow. Um, and 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 um, and worked um, uh, with uh, Bill's group um, on on um, um, exciting problems um, related to physical limits uh, to biochemical si signaling. It was a real um, um, again a very exciting, exhilarating um, uh, uh, time in my uh, professional development, and it was a real pleasure to, to work with Bill. And it was, it was uh, really that formative um, postdoctoral experience that, that um, prepared me for my uh, faculty position at Indiana, which is where I am now. Um, so having spent most of my time in the US on the East and West Coasts, I ended up moving to the Midwest, um, Indiana, University is in, in Bloomington. It's a Big Ten university. Um, uh, uh, Bloomington is a college town. Uh, it's, a, it's a welcoming community in South Central Indiana. It's home to the Jacobs School of Music, uh, Kinsey Institute for Sex, Gender, and Reproduction, um, home to the Lotus Music Festival, the Little 500 Bicycle Race, and um, um, I have gradually um, uh, come to uh, know what it means to be a Hoosier and, uh, and uh, am, um, uh, consider myself a Hoosier now. At IU, I've collaborated with um, many wonderful colleagues. Um, some of them are, are um, uh, pictured here. Um, I would say, a, a, a formative juncture um, while I've been uh, on the faculty here was um, this uh, uh, coincidence between when I was taking a sabbatical and when the physics building shown here on the left was being um, renovated. So this is the old Swain Hall um, the physics building, and and it's shown in 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 a state of of um, a half demolition. Um, uh, it's it's now been replaced by um, a nice new building. Um, but in the course of tearing down our old building, the physicists were scattered throughout campus like spores, 
And, um, and so my, my sabbatical coincided with this renovation. And of course the renovation was longer than my sabbatical, but I ended up with an office um, in the biology building. And, and that was um, uh, a, um, uh, uh, a, a very um, immersive experience and led to some interesting and, and uh, unexpected directions in terms of my work. Um, so surrounded by my uh, biologist colleagues, I ended up working on thinking about and, and working on a number of problems that um, weren't within my um, with, weren't within the mainstream of my my um, research thrusts at the time. So, for example, with um, uh, my colleague Mike Lynch, who uh, used to be at IU but has now moved to Arizona State, and um, a physics graduate student Kyle Hagner, we thought about uh, the problem of evolution of multimers how it is that some proteins function as monomers in some organisms, whereas uh, dimers or trimers or tetramers in, in, um, in other organisms. And another example of a, of a problem that, um, that uh, emerged from this uh, sabbatical slash renovation stay was, um, was a project in collaboration with my um, uh, uh, colleague um, Clay Fuqua and his group, where um, again uh, being present in in the biology building, you know, they um, there was uh, a lot of opportunity for immersive interaction, and they would you know come with these um, uh, experimental results. In this um, case, Ima, uh, yeah, it's a kind reminder that you're approx at the fifteen minute mark. Okay. All right, um, I'll I'll wrap it up, um, and and so these um, um, opportunities for uh, immersive interactions where experimental um, uh, results were were presented to us, and we we had the opportunity to 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 think about accompanying um, um, theoretical results were were um, again um, very um, very formative. Uh, so that uh, project with with clay on bacterial motility in porous media and my my postdoc um, Nick Lakata was again one of the um, um, one of the fallouts of this um, sabbatical and extended stay in um, uh, in in uh, amongst the biologists and of course I've I've worked with a number of um, wonderful students, uh, uh, a set of wonderful students and postdocs, both in physics and, and biology. Some of them are, are pictured here. And I'll end with some um, observations. Um, uh, my path to physics, to biophysics from physics was uh, traditional physics, let's say, was um, adiabatic, as, as I mentioned earlier. But I learned many useful skills along the way. Um, and I've had to put most of them to good use. Uh, my most rewarding scientific experiences have been with collaborators who were also kind, caring, and generous. Um, I've uh, come to appreciate that professional support from mentors and colleagues is crucial. Um, I've been fortunate to be influenced along the way by, by many wonderful colleagues, um, uh, too many to name here. Uh, and and um, as a as a mentor, I um, especially I've tried to pay it forward, and I've especially enjoyed co-mentoring students and postdocs um, across disciplines and with other uh, experimental colleagues. So mosaic mentoring. Thank you, and uh, I'll take any questions. Uh, thank you so much, Simo. Uh, for a great talk, I'm clapping on behalf of the audience. Uh, I'll start by asking you first, uh, did you find that learning Russian changed the way in which you perceive the world uh, and science? So, uh, Shri, um, I minored in Russian liter literature in translation. 
I did not have to learn Russian. <laughs> uh, that's a cheat. Uh, I mean, you did not have my question. Uh, <laughs> but moving on to the next question, um, would you please share whether with the benefit of hindsight, you see some logic to the winding route you took to biophysics? Um, so my foray into biophysics was uh, obviously before we um, had these, you know, sort of established routes. So right now, for example, in, in my department, we have a, a graduate biophysics track. Uh, and so, um, you know, as, as you know, um, uh, the, the, um, the trajectories uh, for physicists interested in uh, physics of living systems is, is, is more direct than, than it was when, when I, um, uh, as I mentioned, sort of adiabatically moved um, through uh, my, you know, graduate school and, and postdoc years into, into biophysics. So uh, I would, I would say that, you know, the, the most compelling thing about it is, is, is the the Princeton um, summer school, Princeton NEC summer school, and and the you know excitement and uh, exhilarating um, experience that that provided. So that is the biggest rhyme and reason. Uh, thank you, Seema. It's not the first time that summer school has appeared in the series, but thank you okay. again. In the interest of time, I'm closing the recording. And thanking you on behalf of the 